All right, what's up guys? Coach Andrew Simmons here from Lifelong Endurance and wanted to go through how we recalculate TSS uh, for a new athlete uh, that you're taking over uh, or if you yourself are an athlete and you're starting to look a little bit more at the data and information that's out there um, and you're seeing a lot of workouts that are maybe 1.1, 1.2 uh, or you're getting really crazy big numbers. Um, they're not making sense and you're trying to use fatigue, form, and fitness to help guide your training, uh, it's really important that the first thing that we do is make sure one, that your zones are set correctly, and then number two, uh, recalculating uh, prior workouts um, to make sure that they actually uh, fit and they're starting to make sense. So uh, one of the big things that we are gonna look at in this is the two ways that we can recalculate TSS. Uh, the first way we're gonna look at, um, and I'll explain um, this in more depth, uh, I know that this athlete's uh, threshold is seven minutes per mile. Um, if I don't have that information, I'm gonna kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm looking for and want to see. So let's dive in. Um, I have this athlete's uh, PMC up and we're only looking at the run data. So it's super important that if you're a, a triathlon coach that you look at the full picture. Uh, you may even need to break this down in terms of run, then bike, then swim. Uh, but as uh, I know this athlete is only a run focused athlete, uh, we're just gonna stick with the one. Um, and when I get a new athlete, the first thing I do is actually go look at the PMC. Uh, I wanna see what I'm looking with. Is my information really crazy and dirty? Um, or are things really well set? Am I taking this over from another coach? Or is this athlete uh, just really good at updating their zones? And the first thing I look at here is for 1.0. Um, when I see 1.0, um, that's gonna tell me that uh, that is their threshold. That is where they, um, they, they, you're not gonna see a ton of runs over 1.0. And so as we look back into earlier parts of uh, this athlete's uh, training, uh, we're seeing at workouts 1.01, 1.07, and I just can't imagine that they're doing a lot of racing in this area considering that it looks like it's pretty sporadic training. So these may have been a couple hard runs mixed in, uh, maybe trying to, trying to get training back on track. Uh, before it seems like they followed a really good plan and got back on track before a November 3rd marathon. Now, when I'm looking at a marathon, I'm looking for an intensity factor of about 0.93, you know, 0.90 to 0.94 is about right. So this is looking pretty good um, here, but I know that uh, this athlete is tested with zones that are at seven flat. Um, so let's go ahead and see how things play out. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, once I make these changes, if they don't fall into certain ranges, um, then I know that something is still a little bit fishy and I need to reinvestigate. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go into this athlete's zones and uh, knowing that they are at eight minutes uh, a mile right now, uh, let's go ahead and change it to seven minutes because we know uh, that their zones have changed. Uh, normally we don't see such a dramatic change in threshold values, um, but when you're taking over an athlete and you do know what their, um, their data is, or you know they've recently run a 5K or given you a field test, uh, you can just go ahead and update that information. I do not like to automatically apply new threshold changes. Um, yes, it may seem really smart to just let training peaks do it, um, but I actually like to have it as a conversation when I'm talking with my athletes. Um, it's kind of a celebration point. It's really important that they understand uh, that they have made significant progress. Significant progress, one minute per mile is uh, pretty huge. Uh, so we know that this was just poor information given to us um, and they didn't have their zones set correctly. So let's go ahead here and we're gonna recalculate TSS. Um, I already kind of chose a prior arbitrary date um, and I tried to film this one other time, but my audio didn't sync up. Uh, so uh, let us use run. We're gonna go here, we're gonna see that the pace is set at seven minutes per mile, and we're gonna recalculate. And you'll watch in the background here, you'll kind of see things kind of shift up and down um, so that things make sense based on zones, because you can imagine they've had a lot of hard workouts um, 
and we're going to see things shift up um, if there was a big change in um, those zones. We saw everything kind of come down uh, because that eight minutes was a little bit inflated. Um, so we know that that CTL, maybe, maybe this athlete isn't quite as fit as uh, they imagined they were. Um, so let's go in here now. We're going to go to the same uh, run and ah, much better, 0.89. That seems more like what this athlete told me uh, this race was. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to look for, and this is how I know uh, my, my zones are set correctly, and this is what I will do. Um, is my second way of setting zones. If I don't have any information, but this athlete has been following um, a pretty good pattern of workout, easy run, easy run, workout, easy run, workout, easy run, easy run, something like that, I know that those truly aerobic runs should be somewhere between you know, 0.81 to 0.85 as an intensity factor or even lower. So I should expect to see that a majority of uh, this marathoner's uh, workouts around 0.80. And that's about what I'm seeing. We're kind of drawing this line in here and saying this is 0.85, a few more above. So they may still be, we may be uh, a little far from, from perfect in terms of the test that we had, but we're much closer than we were when the majority of these runs uh, were 0.9. Uh, to 1.0. Um, so let's go ahead here and kind of take a look um, and see if we have anything that's really crazy out of bounds. Intensity factor of 1.01. Um, occasionally you'll find that if uh, they've accidentally done a swimming workout uh, in the run mode or things like that, you may have some huge outlier data pieces that are really pulling up uh, the PMC in a way that um, really kind of inflates the chart and you're going to get really bad data because a 5.0 TSS workout even though it's you know maybe 180 days away it's still a part of the calculation in the big picture so uh, we want to make sure that we pull out as many of those workouts uh, even if you have workouts that are 1.2 1.3 anything pretty much under 1.05 and 1.10 um, you're gonna, those are okay, that 1.05, 1.10, but anything over that, and you're either not quite uh, in their zones, um, or um, that's an outlier, and if it's like a three mile easy run, and you go and actually take a look at it, um, go in there and manually update that. Um, what you would do is if we were gonna manually update this three mile run, um, what I would just do is I would go in here, and I would change this to say 31. I'd click save um, and then save and close. And if it was a 5.0 TSS workout, this chart would change really dramatically and you'd watch everything kind of change. So uh, it's kind of a, a whip effect that if something happens on the back end of the chart, you can see the effects of it uh, further on down. Um, so just be conscious of that as you're going through. This can be a bit of a time intensive process. So. Um, that is pretty much it when it comes to uh, recalculating TSS. Just make sure that as you are looking uh, and adjusting your information, that if you're not seeing um, you know, the, the fitness and the CTL and all those things kind of falling in the right place, or you're seeing uh, fatigue, fitness, and form numbers that are a little bit out of whack, you might have a, 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 an athlete that's maybe a four hour marathon or five hour marathon or with 100 CTL for just run, you know that something's wrong. If you're seeing form numbers that are in the minus 40s, minus 50s, that's definitely wrong. So that should be a red flag for you as a coach or as an athlete to go in and make sure that your zones are set correctly and then back date and recalculate all of that TSS. If you have any questions about this process or want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Uh, feel free uh, in the description. Uh, I've got our coaches at Lifelong Endurance email hyperlink. Uh, you can click that and shoot us an email anytime with any questions. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you need anything else, shoot us an email and we'll get right back to you. Thanks.